It's not like you're dealing with the same people all the time, except for the administration. Yeah. Um, we'll reconvene this uh, meeting and please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Trustee uh, Twyman, invocation, please. Uh, please bow your heads in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, just a comment about the invocation. I assume everybody has heard about the Supreme Court decision on uh, prayers for these things. So now uh, it may be possible to have a prayer in this instead of a moment of silence. It will be up to the board member. So hopefully that won't upset anybody. We might also possibly get other religious people in here for their prayers too. So. Okay, revision, adoption, ordering of the agenda. Do we have any desired changes? I hear silence. Uh, I think I'll do the same. So, motion for this one, please. So moved. Second. Okay, please vote. Report out of closed session. There's no report this evening, Mr. President. Thank you. District update by the superintendent. Thank you very much, Mr. Holstrom. And uh, this is probably my favorite board meeting of the year. In May, we get we see our students off, our student reps who come here and report to us. We talk about the end of the year activities and all the successes that have gone on this year. And there's been many. Um, I'd first like to talk, and uh, I apologize because this should have been agendized as an information item or an oral report, so that's on me. Um, but uh, Tanya Davis and others, there's a, a crew of people here, board, who we called it the morale committee, and then we just changed it to ACT. And they have a presentation that stands for Administrative Classified and Teachers. And so I'm going to ask uh, the group that's here, they're in the blue shirts to come up and talk about what they're doing and I thank them for being here tonight. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. um, my name is Tanya Davis and I have helped gather together great people uh, to represent our employee morale committee. And at the urging of several people, we decided not to call ourselves the employee morale committee, but to come up with a name. And uh, that is the ACT team. And that is administration, classified, and teachers um, working together in a positive way to build morale in the district, coming up with ideas that we um, think will in increase participation and um, help us move forward in a positive way to solve problems together. So I want to introduce those that are here. I've got Vicki Mueller, who's a teacher at Pinacati. I've got Jose Rodriguez, ASB director at Paris High. I've got Miss Angel Love Barons from CMI, and Mr. Grant Bennett, um, direct, no, director of educational <laughs> services. Sorry, my mind's going blank. Um, I'm going to step away from the microphone because I wanted them to share about their experiences this year. Um, we'll have one final meeting this year to conclude, um, but I want them to share their experiences because you've heard me speak several times here. I'll go first. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, well, we 
got together and it was really a collaboration and we came up with some ideas and some things that we would like to see implemented. And I think there were some things like the parking spaces for employee recognition, the employee recognition dinner, um, next year having the kickoff. We really felt like that's an important way for everyone to you know, have contact with each other. We felt that was important. So um, I'm gonna turn it over. We see more things for the future. Thank you. You're next. Good evening. Um, first of all, employee morale committee didn't fit on the shirt, so <laughs> by default we had to come up with something else. Um, so we chose ACT. I also want you to know that we, we have pride in Paris as a community. So if you don't notice, Spells out Paris on the back. Oh, you're looking at my front now. Here, I'll stand this way, you stand that way. Spells Paris on the back, so there's a little, you know, to get it in there. Um, <laughs> plus, it was designed by one of my students, I'm just saying. Um, and then, uh, so I, I, I think part of what we feel like is that action is better than no action, and so we must try and move forward, and so that's what we started doing. And a uh, big, big thanks to the uh, maintenance department for um, starting the parking spaces, and um, although we're some of us are in different stages of moving forward with that. Just having them out there is making uh, making my colleagues go, hey, uh, I like this. yeah, what's up with that spot? So that's kind of cool. So even that alone, a very, very simple um, start leads to something bigger. I believe it leads to something bigger. So that's what we're, t that's what I think what we're trying to do, yes? Mm -hmm. And hopefully not afraid to, to do it. So from CMI, one of the things that have come about being part of this morale committee, uh, Juno Fernandez and I are, are the ones that come in and participate in these meetings, taking back some of the ideas that we've had. We, as a staff, I can just already see in what little we have been able to move forward with this year that CMI has always felt very, very disconnected from the rest of the district. And we've never liked that. And, you know, we, we know we're part of the district. We know we're different, but we shouldn't be totally separated. So we are feeling more connected to the district through this committee. We feel like if it's being implemented somebody else, someplace else, like the parking spaces, ours aren't painted yet. But we're, we're getting there, and, and my staff does know that they're coming, and they really liked it. We had a great teacher appreciation week, um, just, and we had a whole week of it. It was really, really awesome. And um, the kickoff, we're really happy to see the kickoff back, too, because it was one time a year that we could come out and really, truly feel like we are a part of this really fantastic district that we know we're part of, but the community even sometimes forgets that we're part of you guys. So we're happy with that. I just wanted to add, you know, working on with this committee, it's been uh, very rewarding to get together, and it's really all about how we're treating each other and how we're working together to be able to make our district a better place. So be able to do some little things. We talked about some big, huge things originally, and we broke it down to much smaller things that make more of a difference for individual people and, and at each of the schools, and that, that's been important. So I have really had a great time working with this group, and I think we have some great things coming up with the kickoff. So we're really looking forward to that. Will you hold it for me? Um, we shared this at the Employee of the Year recognition, but I wanted to share it with the public because these uh, perpetual plaques are the result of some things that we talked about in the employee or in the ACT team meetings uh, about um, recognizing employees year after year and making sure that we don't forget those district winners. So this will be um, set up as a collage in the Human Resources Office. So if you ever get a chance to come by, once we get them up uh, in the next few weeks, we think it's going to be a, a nice um, dedication to all of those district winners that we've had, teachers, classified, administrators who've won that every year. So I just want to personally say thank you to the team. Thank you to the Paris High School ASB students who designed this shirt. Um, recognition to them and thank you, uh, thank them for their hard work because I love them. And I'm excited to be a part of it and I can't wait to see what we can do next year. Do you guys have any questions? So what's going to happen? You, you were talking about, uh, I don't know what you call it, welcome back or that sort of thing, kickoff event. Uh, is that a secret or you want you or? Well, it's the district-wide district kickoff that's going to be held August 5th and 6th um, that all employees will be attending. And that's something that 
um, we brought as a committee back to cabinet to say, to say that we really wanted that back. We felt like we needed to be connected as employees and it's worked out well that it fell in line with all of the district needs and we're able to all be together in one location, which I think brings unity to the district and we feel like we're a big family. Yes. We have, we have planned the day. We have a motivational speaker coming to help kick off the day. And so I think it's going to be really good. Great, thank you. Thank you all very much. And it Well, we're going to recognize, we couldn't recognize, or we didn't have enough time to recognize every single student who deserves probably to be recognized, but we do have a number of students who've been exceptional and deserve recognition. Um, I'm going to introduce Mr. Fung Fung, from, who is a teacher at Heritage High School and student Cole Rausch. Um, he's moving on in the national debate, uh, speech and debate program, and so I've asked them to come and for you to honor him and, um, and tell us what he's going to be able, where he's going from here. Okay. Well, we, we also have Kenneth Rosano here. Oh, uh, wonderful. He'll be joining us. I'm well. sorry. Um, so um, I am the um, current coach for the speech and debate team at Heritage High School, and um, a lot of the credit goes also to uh, Mr. William Clow, who established and built the program. Um, so this year, uh, we had a group of um, eight students as part of the speech and debate team. Um, with that small, even with that small group, four of our students qualified for the state championships uh, in Modesto, California. And Candice Rosado here, she finished fifth in the state. So she, wow. uh, in humorous interpretation. Yeah. Wow. And And Cole, who's standing beside me, he also qualified for, and competed at the state championships. But even, <laughs> but I have even greater news than that. Um, the two of them have qualified uh, to the national championships in Overland Can uh, Park, Kansas, uh, this summer, and they'll be going and com competing in their respective um, uh, competitions. So um, I would like first. Have, um, Cole speak. Well, um, I'm Cole Rao. I'm a student at Heritage High School. It's actually my first year at the school. Um, but why, why I'm here today is to really to tell you about the achievement of qualifying at nationals. And the national qualifier tournament is a tournament that takes place in Southern California that consists of San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange, and San Diego counties, and all the debate schools included in those counties. And myself, I qualified in what is known as Lincoln-Douglas debate, which is a one-on-one -on -one debate focusing on philosophy. So morality, justice, and concepts like that are what we discuss. And we debate against each other. And the real achievement for me was in that such a difficult debate to comprehend is that I, I ended up going undefeated and uh, defeating all my opponents from those counties and qualifying for the national tournament in Kansas. And debate... As its, as its own, has really actually not only brought me great joy throughout high school, but it's helped me a lot. It helps in essay writing, it helps in the social studies and English, it helps it truly in every subject, because it allows you to have a greater understanding not only of yourself, but the world, and that you have an understanding of what is going on internationally, but also what you think, what you believe, what you understand, it all comes into question and it all is clarified for you, and it is all brought to your attention so that it's really an educational experiment or experience for all involved. Now, why we're here today is to implore the board to any funds available to allow us to go to Kansas. We are fundraising our, our own, but it's $1,100 per student to make it, and funds are very tight in such a, a desperate economy, frankly. And we're just any funds necessary and or any funds available. We would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? I'm there, there we go. All right. I'm a little bit shorter than Cole is. Um, my name is Candace Rosado. I am one of the captains of the speech and debate team at Heritage High School. Um, as Cole had mentioned, we have qualified for the national tournament this year in Kansas. And it's 
funds are very tight. <laughs> we are we are trying to do everything we can to fundraise. Tomorrow we actually have we're hosting a showcase, our first annual showcase for speech and debate, and we're trying to do as much as we possibly can. Um, honestly, we we love speech and debate. It's something that we've we take a lot of pride in. And I actually was the first person to qualify for this district for the speech and debate national tournament last year. And now it's it's even more of a pleasure to have Cole by my side and qualify with me. So if any help, any assistance would be greatly appreciated. And I thank you guys very much for letting us speak today. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations and thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, don't we support our students? I mean, we send them field trips and all kinds of things and, huh? Working on it right now. All right. Speak. All right. Thank you. Yep. Would you like me to answer that? For, we, we have a policy in the district that um, the school site budgets support, you know, their, you know, their competitions at, at the regular competition level. It's easier if I relate this to to sports, so forgive me, speech and debate. But when um, a school makes it to the CIF level, that's when the district picks up that tab. We do the same with speech and debate, as Mr. Clo knows from last year and Candace from last year. Even though you held fundraisers and it was, you did a great um, humorous um, speech, I saw you at the comedy club, <laughs> um, just like we do for FFA. So please don't worry about the funding. <laughs> Well, congratulations on order for Pinnacotti Middle School, Alexandra and uh, C. They didn't give me your last name. Alexandra C. and uh, her teacher, Ms. Vicki Mueller, Friday Night Light Club advisor, for winning the 13th annual art contest for the Dare to Aware conference in November. All students from all Riverside schools, Riverside County schools who attend the conference will receive a T-shirt with a picture on the front. And uh, again, Alexandra is the winner. A special thanks to Vicki Mueller, Pinnacotti Middle School's club advisor for the art submissions. And I think we have the student to recognize her mother and Vicki Mueller. Move this back up here. Um, good evening. I wanted to also bring a copy of the artwork that, was, that won, and I can pass it around. Um, I wanted to also mention that... Um, there were over 40 submissions from the county. And um, she said that she unanimously won. And then she um, emailed me back privately, and she goes, I just want you to know it was a landslide. <laughs> she, she said it wasn't unanimous. It was a landslide. So oh. I wanted to share this with you. Um, thank you, Alexander. She also gets a $50 um, gift card to a venue of her choice, which she still hasn't told me what it's going to be. But for the rest of you, this is her artwork. The Dare to Be Aware conference, it's um, anti-stigma. It's to remove stigma from people for seeking help for depression, anxiety, eating disorders, um, all those things. So um, the message has to be, um, I decide, I change, I lead. And so I think she did an amazing job, and I'm so proud of her. So Congratulations. Well, let's go this way first. Here we go. Okay, and in the spirit of celebration of student success, um, I mentioned to the board last month about this student, but I'll continue. It is with great pleasure that I announced that Esmeralda Garcia has been certified as a Gates Millennium Scholar. The Gates Millennium Scholar Program selects 1,000 talented students each year to receive a good through graduation scholarship to use at any college or university of their choice. As was previously mentioned, Esmeralda will be attending UCLA in the fall. Please, and um, she's here today along with the AVID coordinator who helped make this happen, Beatrice O'Connell. So both of you come on forward and be recognized. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Thank you. I would like to start by thanking Dr. Greenberg for inviting us to uh, celebrate Esmeralda's accomplishments. 
Uh, not only is Esmeralda one of our top AVID students, but uh, she's actually ranked number six in our, uh, in our senior graduation class this year. Um, she will be attending UCLA, as Dr. Greenberg mentioned, um, in the fall. But <laughs> she also was a recipient of the Dell Scholarship, right. and uh, she's a Dell Scholar and Gates Millennium. And both of those scholarships are very prestigious, and uh, it's really difficult to get one of those. The Dell Scholarships is 300 students only get awarded, and the Gates Millennium, only 1,000 students get awarded. Um, it's just amazing. Esmeralda is an amazing student, and I wish her the best at UCLA, and I know she will do great things as a Bruin. So Congratulations. <laughs> Esmeralda, would you like to add anything? I'm sure. Okay. Okay, I'm short. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, so I'm Esmeralda Garcia, <laughs> and I'm just, thank you for the opportunity of everything, just constant support in the district. What really pushed me to think I have a chance is pretty much I was selected as student of the month in January. And I was that's around the time when I submit my Gates Millennium Scholarship and Dell Scholarship. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I have a chance because over like 20,000 people apply for the Gates alone and as well as the Dell. A lot of people apply. And I'm like, how do I have a chance? Like little Menifee. And I'm like, how are we going to be on like known? And then after receiving student of the month, I was like, OK, if I can be selected and known without my like knowledge with Ms. Ch Sarah or Ms. O'Connell nominating me, maybe I have a chance to receive a scholarship in the future. So I submitted it the day of, and I was just super ecstatic when I found out because I had no idea how I was going to pay for college. And now that's great to not have the financial stress. And now I can focus on academics and hopefully I'm planning on working with um, preschoolers while through a work study. So I'll be doing education at the same time while I major in cognitive science. So that is my plan at UCLA. So thank you so much. <laughs> Any further questions? Thank you. Congratulations again. Wow. Um, tonight we're very pleased to recognize student Rodrigo Contreras from Paris High School and his wonderful art teacher, Glennett Baldwin. Could you come up to the podium, please? I'm very proud to announce this year's winner for the Congressional Art Competition. This is happening a lot with your students, Ms. Baldwin. If you happen to, oh, um, please congratulate him. This was the note at Paris High School for his hard work and his excellent art project. project. Rodrigo loves to play chess and usually beats all of his opponents, including his teacher. It was perfect to him to create a mosaic collage representing the chessboard and significant chess figures. Um, he has won two free tickets to Washington, D.C. to witness a ribbon cutting where his artwork will hang with other students' artwork from around the United States. The work will hang in the uh, Congressional Building for one year. Wow. You don't have to say anything, but how about you, Ms. Baldwin? Well, it's really a pleasure to have it, the opportunity once again. And Rodrigo um, was kind of trying to figure out what he was going to work on, and since he's really an expert chess player, um, he chose to do a mosaic, which is consisted of uh, a half-inch square, and the size of the piece is 20 by 24 inches, so it, it's a nice size. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a picture. It will be in the newspaper, but I'm not sure if it's in the local paper for everyone to see. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just very pleased with him. It took two months to work on, and he did it. Beautiful job. Beautiful. Would you like to say anything about this? No. <laughs> I'm very proud of him. Congratulations, and enjoy Washington, D.C. What an experience. Uh, this comes from Principal Don Williamson from Paloma Valley High School. I want to share some good news. Joshua Q. Yuan has qualified for the 2015 National Merit Scholarship Program. Joshua scored in the top 50,000 students out of 1,500,000 students who took the PSAT. This put him in the top 3% nationally. He will be recognized by the National Merit uh, Program next fall. With a selection score of 200 or above, he has shown outstanding academic potential. I didn't invite the student here tonight, but I thought it's quite a recognition for a junior. I can't wait to see what he does as a senior at Paloma Valley High School. Congratulations, Joshua Juan. 
And the next message comes from our Grant Bennett, and uh, he wanted to remind us that we have a number of students who are getting scholarships as we give out scholarships at senior award nights around the district. Uh, these are the Puma Scholarship, uh, Parish Union Management Association. Uh, Grant said, we're able to increase each of our scholarships to $500 this year, and we're still the largest contributor to the Student of the Year program at $2,000. Uh, none of this would have been possible without the hard work of his team that went on a great golf tournament this year. The winning students are $500 each. Um, from Paloma Valley High School, Sydney Valadez. From Paloma Valley High School, Karina Franco Ibarra. From Heritage High School, Van Tran. From Heritage High School, Carla Ortiz. From CMI, Brian Landeros. From Paris High School, Ronnie Laquette. And from Paris High School, my... Thu who's going to USC, I believe. And so congratulations to her. And from Paris Lake High School, Yvonne Romero. Let's have a nice round of applause for those great students. Okay, so I have to make sure I don't get lost in all of this. Speaking, we were earlier speaking about um, Penacotti Middle School. And uh, Irene Lewis, who has been working for the district for years, coordinating uh, programs so that students won't get involved in drugs or alcohol and those kinds of things. She's been foremost in the district working with Vicki Mueller on Friday Night Live programs. Um, for the second year, uh, district Friday Night Live clubs and Pinnacotti Club Live participated and hosted a teen summit in cooperation with the Paris Valley Recovery. This year, there are approximately 56 students in attendance. Next year's event will strive to find a date without as many conflicts with Relay for Life and the health fair and all that. Students attending the workshops uh, by Eddie Chagola, who gave a testimonial on his personal involvement in gang life, and Deb Beckwith with the SHAE Project, who discussed the importance of making good choices in relation to avoiding drug use. Vendors from local agencies handed out information and were available for student question. Three Paris Union High School District schools uh, presented information. Nick Critchfield from Paloma Valley talked about the effects of lifetime smoking on lungs and how it affects breathing. breathing. The effects were further illustrated by having audience members try to breathe, breathe through a stick of licorice during, uh, during the experience. Pentagotti Club members presented skits on drinking and driving. Yuritsa Ayan and Oscar Sanchez from Paris High School with the help of Paris High School Friday Night Live Club shared California Healthy Kids survey information about the perceptions of drug use at Paris High School that uh, disproved the perception that everybody is using drugs at Paris High School. It was an interactive presentation with audience members representing the statistics. The Paris Youth Council was busy at the health fair but managed to send two representatives who happened to be from Rancho Verde High School. Lunch was provided by Assembly District 5, and students were able to earn community service hours for attending. Anything else you want to talk about in regards to that, Ms. Mueller? No, I just, next year, we need to make sure to the date that we don't have 20 different events going on. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Well, we, we talked about, um, at the last board meeting board, about how wonderful the rollout of the Chromebooks has been. And we got a message from Malia Ortloff. She is the Educational Specialist for Eastern Municipal Water District. And this is just the email she said, sent. She said, hello, I was at the Romaland School Board meeting last night, which would have been May 13th. And when school board member Dave Fox gave his report, he talked about being a part of the senior interviews at Heritage High School. He spoke about a young man who attended school in the Romaland School District and moved on to uh, to Heritage High School. He said that in the past he had to work so hard to keep up with other students because he did not have access to a computer at home. The student went on to say when they received their laptops, their Chromebooks, from the Paris Union High School District, it changed his life and helped him excel at school. He'll be attending a university in the fall and he credits the implementation of providing students with computers with changing his life. And again, this came from somebody who heard it in a board meeting and thought she'd pass it along and congratulate you as board members for having the courage to do that. That's pretty special. Um, I'd also like to say that, um, and I'm going to read this because I sent this out to all employees in the district, but the public didn't have a chance to hear. It gives me great pleasure to announce that three of our schools have received 2014 Riverside County Office of Education Model of 
uh, Academic Excellence Awards. Any district receiving one of these awards would feel both honored and respected. Receiving three is nothing short of phenomenal. The first winner of the 2014 Model of Academic Excellence Awards is Paloma Valley High School. Specifically, Paloma is recognized for its implementation of technology within the Common Core framework. The teaching staff at Paloma has done an amazing job of implementing the new Common Core standards through the use of the district's one-to-one -one technology initiative. While we said this year would be a soft grand opening as it relates to Common Core, SBAC, and technology, the teachers at Paloma Valley are to be commended for their extraordinary efforts on behalf of their students. The second winner of the 2014 Models of Academic Excellence Awards is Pinnacotti Middle School. Specifically, Pinnacotti is recognized for Positive Behavior Intervention Strategies Program. That program is part of a nationwide effort to reduce the number of suspensions and expulsions of minority students and keep them in school and on track in their classes. Pinnacotti has seen huge reductions in referrals and other disciplinary actions as a result of their implementation of PBIS. Congratulations to the staff at Pinnacotti for going the extra mile to reach all of our students. The third winner of the 2014 Model of Academic Excellence Awards is Heritage High School. Heritage is recognized for its Counseling for Success program. The counselors at Heritage run a unique program that focuses on numerous interventions and programs to meet the needs of all of their students. Parents, students, and staff rave about the personal attention they receive from their counselors. Congratulations to our great counselors at Heritage High School. And again, all of these schools will be on display presenting their ac academic excellence uh, programs on October 14th when RCOE hopes their 12th annual education summit. And I couldn't be more proud of these schools and what they've done for their students. <coughs> I want to also take a moment to thank the Employee Recognition Committee. We heard about them earlier. Um, we had a great ceremony the other uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, it was the best one I've seen in eight years, and that includes the ones we had at Harrison Hall where, excuse the expression, there was alcohol, so people were in a better mood. Uh, in, all seriousness, in all seriousness, from the overall atmosphere, the food, the entertainment, speeches and awards, it was absolutely perfect. Um, I'm not sure how your committee, uh, Ms. Davis, will be able to top that next year, but my guess is you'll outdo yourselves again. Thank you. It was a wonderful time, and it was I was happy to see our board members there. All of them were able to make it, so thank you very much. Also, uh, something new and innovative that I haven't seen yet in almost or over seven years is a career day. We had a career day at uh, Paloma Valley High School on Monday. Um, I guess the kids who put down their last selection, which would have been to hear the superintendent speak about his career, those poor students, had to sit through and hear three sessions of me. But... Um, the other students got to hear from real estate agents and uh, phlebotomists and all kinds of wonderful occupations that are in our community, and they had a great time. And I have to tell you, Carrie Getchell, a teacher at Paloma Valley High School, an English teacher, she really coordinated and did a great job, and the students had a, a morning a little bit different than they normally have. So congratulations to them. I, I believe it's time to recognize Maribel Flores. Is she here with her husband? Yeah. Where is Maribel? Oh, oh, can you come on up? We don't want your husband yet. We'll <laughs> recognize him later. Maribel Flores, who works as a paraeducator at Paloma Valley High School, has been recognized as paraeducator of the year yeah. for Riverside County. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> How do you top that? You can't, right? <laughs> Tell us about what you do at Paloma. Um, right now I'm actually working in the classroom for SH with Cami Meyer. So we work with um, like the severely handicapped kids. Um, right now I work with more of the middle range because we split our classes up to medically fragile, middle, and then higher functioning. So I work with them. If they go to a different classroom, I go with them. Pretty much so um, that's pretty much it I just well, help out a lot but I mean 
Well, sometimes the work of our paraeducators gets overlooked. We're today, This week is support staff week where we recognize our paraeducators, our office secretarial staff, our campus supervisors, our custodians, our cafeteria workers, and the list goes on and on, our technicians in technology. But paraeducators, especially working with SH students, have a very, very tough job. And I know you put your heart and soul in it. I've seen you over at Paloma. And congratulations on your recognition. Thank you. Well, it's not, you know, I mean, the teachers help out a lot, too. So, I mean, it has to be a collaboration with all of us, right? So. Well, congratulations again. Thank you, Mirabel. Is Tony Stafford here? Did he stay for the board meeting? He didn't stay for the board meeting. Well, um, Tony Stafford retired as the plant supervisor. Well, he was plant supervisor at, at uh, Heritage High School, and then he worked in maintenance and operation, did a wonderful job. Well, he's back. Um, as you know, the district is taking a proactive approach in efforts to reduce energy spending by implementing a sustainable people-oriented energy conservation program through Synergistic. One of the uh, critical components of the program is a dedicated energy specialist. So as we said in the other room when we honored the retirees, Tony failed at retirement. I think he was there about three, week, three months. Uh, together, Synergistic and the district selected Tony Anthony Stafford Sr., who recently retired from the district. And uh, Tony will be begun auditing school and district sites in the coming weeks, but you'll start seeing him around the district. Tony will also need to meet with everybody in the district and find out what he can do to try to improve our conservation. And again, uh, we're not going to turn lights off on people when they're in the room, but I think there's some, I, Tony believes and this company believes there's things we can do to save energy, which is a good thing, and also it, the money saved goes into the general fund, which is for teachers and students. So I welcome Tony Stafford back to the district. The Citrus Belt Athletic Directors Association has announced that Athletic Director Ken Cohen at Paris High School, David Drake, Athletic Director Dean at Heritage Sky High School, and Michael Pfeiffer, Athletic Director at Paloma Valley High School, are all recipients of a sport, the Sportsmanship Award. This award is given to recognize schools that emphasize sportsmanship and conduct their athletic programs with honor. As a district, we naturally want all of our teams to compete at the highest level and win championships and league titles. That being said, competing with honor extends the lessons of the classroom to the athletic fields. I want to congratulate Ken Cohn, David Drake, and Michael Pfeiffer for leading great athletic programs at their respective schools. I also want to thank all the coaches who work underneath them for setting great examples for all of our student athletes, their families, and communities we serve. And that's... Again, something to be very proud of because when you attend these events, you really want to see great sportsmanship. Now, also while we're talking about coaches and uh, Paloma Valley High School, we just learned that California Interscholastic Federation Southern Section has named its 10th annual Champions for Character Award winners. Paloma, Paloma is one of two schools to win this award. Heritage has won it in the past, and Paris is going to win it soon. Um, Coach Esposito, one of six coaches to be recognized as well. Um, and so we want to congratulate Coach Esposito, who coaches not only football, but track and field at Paloma Valley High School for a job well done. Let's have a nice round of applause for our coaches. I apologize for the link, but this is all good stuff. Uh, Paris Union High School District received a $590,000 asset grant. I should say that yeah. Diane Martin wrote a grant so that we could bring all that money home. Uh, California Department of Education has awarded Paris High School 295000 and Heritage High School 295000 The purpose of these grants is to improve academic achievement, enrichment services that reinforce and complement our academic programs, and family literacy and related educational services. So it's good news. We're going to have more, more opportunities for after-school opportunities for our students. Yes, please. Put your mic on, though. Okay. I just met with the uh, Think Together team, and I don't want anyone to get too panicky, but um, it equates to over $1.5 million per site over the next five to seven years. So it will really help with after-school programs and assisting our students. Thank you very much. I want to recognize Paris High School. Last week, um, if you haven't noticed, the Sizzler on Nuevo Road in Paris has been closed for a few months while they went through renovation. 
And um, Sally and Gary Myers, who own that Sizzler, are the most incredible contributors to student scholarships, student of the month, student of the year. They give away hundreds of thousands of dollars in, co- in collaboration with local businesses. Well, they reopened the Sizzler, and believe it or not, we had Paris High cheerleaders there. We had the wonderful Paris High band playing. And then, uh, with all that Sally and her husband do for our district and our students, they ended up giving us money. Um, They gave money to the um, Key Club, uh, $1,000, I believe, at Heritage High School. Uh, Paloma Valley, they gave money to Mr. Hughes for his video production program. And Paris High School, I just think they gave the money to ASB. I think. Is that right? They gave the money to um, band, ASB, cheer. Where is Jose? Did he leave? Help me out. Help me out. Okay. (laughs) ROTC. ROTC. That was the other. Thank you. And again, I just want to take the opportunity to thank them. Um, And last but not least, um, can you cue up the... uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, As you know, the lady to my left was Riverside County's... uh, Certificate Administrator of the Year. (laughs) And here is just a short video that I think will, for those of you who weren't able to attend, um, really put everything in perspective. Worked with different types of students and and young adults, many at risk, and I've learned probably more lessons than I've ever provided to them. One of the biggest lessons I've learned was that we all have potential and we all need somebody to help us tap into that potential. I've realized that education just isn't a one day shot. It is a journey, it's a life journey, and that we're not here just to direct students, we're here to form lives. One of the greatest lessons I learned was that it's not the huge advances, it's not the huge hills that they but that they get to the top, it's those little small steps. Whether it be a non-English speaking student who writes a full sentence in English, or a parent, when you turn to a parent at a conference and you say, your child has a lot of potential, your child needs to go to college, and the parent weeps. Marcy has taught me how to see the best in everyone. So when I hire, I hire paraeducators or special education teachers, I look for people who care. She's just absolutely phenomenal. She's an advocate for everything student. Everything student. They're all this big package. And I think what Marcy does is she puts a nice bow on the top. Nobody cares more about kids than Marcy. She is true to the core. It's all about students. We went through the toughest budget cuts since the Great Depression. And with Marcy's leadership, she insisted that we make those cuts furthest away from the kids. And as a district that is the first one in the county to be one-to-one with students, meaning all of our students have technology, Marcy felt it was a civil right. As I became assistant superintendent, the onset of Common Core became so apparent. We realized that we were very well invested in Common Core, AVID, SBAC, and technology advancements. And with that, we formed the CAST, which meant it was the integration of all these pursuits and endeavors where everyone's a stakeholder, not just top-down management, but we had to begin to build and empower our staff from within. Uh, She's a phenomenal person to work with. She is such a heart of gold, and she is just a tremendous leader. I've never met somebody so dedicated to education and to serving children as she is. She loves what she does, and it shows, and people embrace that about her. And I just love working for her. You know, whether it's a student who just got a cochlear implant and speaks for the first time, or hears your voice for the first time, or someone over in Afghanistan who sends you a simple thank you, Um, Those are the most tremendous rewards anyone could hope for. And last but not least, Mr. President, uh, this Saturday, uh, right between Paris and Menifee, um, they had to put it right on the border so it wouldn't be controversial. It's actually in Paris but it's also for Menifee. It's called the Paris Menifee Drop Zone Water Park. It's opening at 8.30 this Saturday. Everybody's invited. And just so you know, that means we're going to have swim programs at Heritage 
and at Paloma Valley and uh, water polo teams from both schools. And Paris is going to join over there as well because it's really a better competition pool. And so, uh, but it's also a great opportunity for our kids in the summer just to have a safe place to go and 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 get out of the hot sun and enjoy the water. So, um, I hope everybody will join me by attending that event. And that'll conclude my report. Um, just as a addition here, we. Uh we're talking about our who gets to do the graduation speeches up here, and one of the conditions I set out with my people who got me was that we have to share these speeches amongst ourselves so that one person doesn't get five and everybody else has zero. <laughs> so we're kind of we were talking about it a little bit ago, so uh, we'll go through and see who. We volunteers to do which school, and so the principals will then know who they can contact and make arrangements. So, uh, Ed, I'll start with you. Which one did you like to do? Paris uh, Union High School. Okay. Is that the one? Paris. Paris, Paris, High, school. Paris oh. High School. Paris High School. Okay, okay. High school. so Nick now knows where he needs to t who he needs to talk to. Uh, and Carolyn is opting out, in my belief. So, David, what do you volunteer to do? Um, Heritage, and I believe you guys also nominated me for, for Paloma Valley as well. So. Okay, so he's... Hey, I'm volunteering for both. He's Paloma young. Valley. He can Same carry way. it. He can carry it. Hey, there's a future president in the making right there. Okay, that takes care of the high schools. And now, Joan, which is your choice? Okay, Paris Lake, and I leaves me with Pinacati, which I spent a few years there. I would enjoy doing that. So, and uh, I think that's the ones CMI. that. CMI. Oh, CMI. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't it, speak I didn't, but that's because in the past they didn't need us. So they do a wonderful job without yeah. some old president which babbling one? on. I'll nominate Bill. Yeah. What's that? Uh, I think I. I I, I like the tradition that he has set, and I think it's just wonderful. Um, one, one last thing, and I have to, it's, it's on my phone, so I don't want to forget it, is uh, we just found out today that Julie Shaw, a teacher at Heritage High School, is, has been accepted in the Google Teacher Academy. It means that she's going to be a Google certified teacher. Only about 50 people get accepted into this program each session, three sessions in the United States. Educators all over the world apply for it. The benefits of becoming is uh, of the benefit of becoming uh, a GCT is a two-day training by Google and network opportunities with amazing thinkers like Joe Williams. Um, and so she thanks everybody for the support and getting. Is Julie here? Julie, come on up to the microphone and tell us about it instead of me doing it. Uh, so I actually wasn't planning on being here tonight, but I found out about this today. Uh, I literally read the first sentence of the email that says, Congratulations, and I closed my laptop drove over to the district office to tell Joe and Shane because they helped me immensely with my video. Um, and that drive from Heritage to the district office never felt so long because I was just so excited to be here. And um, uh, possibly at the next meeting we could show the video. It's only a minute long, but it really is just embraces all the amazing things that we do here at the district with Scholar Plus. And my students were all involved with creating the video and they are just as invested in this um, in the Scholar Plus program as all of us are. So they, you know, just thank you so much for for everything that you've been, been doing for our district. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, reports by student representatives to the Board of Trustees in recognition of 2013-14 student representatives to the Board of Trustees. And, okay, what we're going to do is that we will present our student a uh, certificate and then they will give a report in their last one for this year. So, uh, I would like to introduce from Heritage High School, Melissa Quijada.
Well, good afternoon, members of the board, and thank you very much for the certificate. So many things have happened and have yet to occur after the last report and the previous meeting. So to begin with, our junior class did an amazing job planning our prom. Prom was on May 3rd at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and the theme was Underwater Paradise. We were able to eat a full course meal, which was really great, and we were also able to look at the many exhibits that were open throughout the night. And my favorite one was probably the sea otter one. It was amazing. And now moving on to our AVID department, our annual AVID award night was held at the University of California, Riverside, where AVID students received their AVID sashes and medals for participating in the program for four years. Additionally, we were fortunate to have students win other awards, such as the RIM scholarship, and we also had a student speaker present a motivational speech as well. Senior awards. Senior awards were on May 15th and held in the theater. Many seniors received great recognition and deserved scholarships. Moving on to ASB, so this Thursday, ASB will put together the Senior Assembly where we'll talk about grad night, present a slideshow, and we will also give various awards to many seniors. Additionally, ASB will host the class party on June 3rd for special education students. We are very excited and we decided to name it Under the Sea Party because we know that many that um, special education students cannot attend our prom, so we kind of want to make a little prom for them at our school. And um, this, the theme is similar because we're going to call it Under the Sea instead of Underwater Paradise. So we're really excited for that. And this Thursday, Heritage will also be hosting our annual art show that will be held in the cafeteria from 5 to 8 p.m. We encourage many to come see how skilled Heritage students are. This exhibit features beautiful ceramic creations done on the potter's wheel and many wonderful drawings and paintings as well. Senior news. Grad night will be held May 30th and it will be at Six Flags. The following week will become senior checkout day. Then, as the rest of the students take their final, seniors will be enjoying their hard-earned graduation activities, or what we like to call them gradivities. The activities are the annu annual senior dance and barbecue, along with a breakfast and a trip to Dave & Buster's. And finally, June 12th is the last day of school and graduation day. The graduation ceremony will be held on our, out on our stadium at 6 p.m. So that concludes my report, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Twyman. From Paloma Valley, Samantha Kewell. I'm going to just lean over the table, if that's okay. And thank you for coming and give us the information every week. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board, President Holstrom, Superintendent Greenberg, and members of the cabinet. Um, my name is Jade Romo. I'm in place of Samantha Kuehl tonight. She couldn't make it due to a family illness and situation with that. So, um, so I'll let you know about some events uh, here at Paloma. If it'll click. Um, first of all, our girls track. They won league championship this year. We're very proud of their accomplishments. Next, our girls softball won the league championship also. They won their first round of CIF playoff game ag um, against Oak Hills from Hesperia, 4-2 to last night, and they play La Quinta Thursday. Our boys baseball also won the league championship, and their first round of CIF playoffs is this Friday. Our boys volleyball wins the league championship also. They were ranked eight, and they took on the number one team. They only lost by two points, and they took them to five games, so they still have an outside chance to go to state. Also, we had Donata Martin. She's competing off of the three-meter board at CIF Diving Finals. She finished fourth in her first competition, so she's never competed in diving before and was able to pull off a fourth place. Also, we had the Citrus Bell Area Athletic Directors Association honor the outstanding male and female senior athletes from each school. Ramon Benz and Kaylee Smith were the honored guests from Paloma. Congratulations to them. And Paloma was also awarded the CBAADA Sportsmanship Award. 
Um, our champions for character award winners, Paloma was one of two schools to receive this award this year, and Coach Espo was one of the six coaches to be recognized. We also had Relay for Life. The Relay for Life was a great success. This event is held to help find a cure for cancer and be supportive of the many families who endure such a hardship. This year, it raised over $70,000. Prom was made third. It was very successful. We had it at the Grove Anaheim. Uh, we had a great outcome. Congratulated Haley Freeze and Michael Valencia. It's our prom king and queen, and our theme was Great Gatsby, so a lot of our students liked that a lot. And career day went very well. We had over 80 presenters, and the students also really loved that. Also, we had Anything Goes. It was our drama presentation and delighted the audiences. Our Models of Academic Excellence Award from our COE. Paloma received this award for recognition of its implementation of technology within the Common Core framework. Our staff will be presenting this at the Fall Summit. And our Crystal Apple Award winners, we had John Randall, James McManaman, and Matt Thomas. These are all teachers that were chosen by their students for this award. And Esmeralda Garcia, our Student of the Year, winner of the Gates Millennium and Dell Scholarships. The Gates Foundation chooses only 1,000 students nationwide, so that's very impressive that she was able to get that. Sizzler donated $1,000 to Paloma. This last week, Sizzler gave the video productions department of Randy Q as 1000 for its work videoing Student of the Month for the past several years. So that really helps out because they put in so much hard work. And testing. Paloma just successfully completed SBAC, Cassie, and AP testing. So we're all done with that. <laughs> it's a relief. It's a relief. <laughs> Our graduation countdown. We only have 20 days left. So it'll be, a, that's a relief too. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Trustee Cooley. Good evening, President Holstrom, Dr. Greenberg, and school board members. Tonight, we would like to do a recap with a video. In March, we had our prom fashion show. And of course, our prom. Sold out for the very first time ever, 400 tickets. Okay, Melissa, let's go check out the campus. And besides, these shoes are killing me. <laughs> Each month we always brag about our FFA, so today instead of talking about it, we're going to show you. Hi, I'm here with FFA member Anessa. Who do we have here? We have our goat, Joaquin. Okay, so now we're here in our pig stalls, and Anessa, who do we have here? We have our pet pig, Wilbur. <laughs> and have you heard, Paris High is under construction. These are our newest buildings. Social Sciences. construction are these beautiful fences. Okay, so they're not that beautiful, but at the end our campus is going to be beautiful. On our very own Panther Stadium, we held our annual Relay for Life. And in our stadium, we also held our sports challenge. The challenges were some students and the mentor athletes participated in games such as the free throw. And currently running in our NPR is West Side Story. We wish we had time to show you everything in person, but unfortunately we don't have two hours. So here's a quick rundown of what's been, what's been going on. On March 28th, we had the 8th grade elective fair. 
which is where Penacati comes and to check out our electives. On the 30th, we had our blood drive number three. 170 units were donated. Donated. On May 1st, we had our senior assembly, which you guys can see we're ready to leave. On the 2nd, we held our talent show. 350 people came out to watch the, to watch 18 acts. On the 7th, National Honor Society. 20 more members were inducted into National Honor Society. Third team, we had our Sizzler re-grand opening. Welcome to the new generation of Sizzler! Let's get your name badge at the station. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sizzlers. Follow me this way. Is this fine? Thank you, Sizzler. Five hundred dollars was given out to Cheer and ASB, and a thousand dollars was given out to Ben. On the seventeenth, the Menifee Half Marathon will be held. Key Club will be out there to cheer on the runners. On the 22nd, Senior Awards Night will be held. Awards and scholarships will be given out to the seniors. On the 28th, FFA Awards Night. Please come out and support FFA. So now I'd like to take the time to thank you guys since this will be my last meeting. From now on, you'll be seeing Melissa, of course. Three more years. Yeah, three more years. <laughs> uh, I am now off to UC Santa Barbara, and there isn't words to describe my, my experience in Paris High. Paris High has truly taken up a lot of space in my heart, more than I had ever thought about. And um, that would like to go to all the teachers I've come across. Come across I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I've come across a lot of amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. Two of them were here, well, one of them was here, Ms. Baldwin, and the second, of course, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, and I would also like to thank all you guys for all your time and for giving me this experience. This was my first year. She's more experienced with this, so she will be taking on this from now on. And I just want to say thank you, and hopefully I'll still see you guys around. I'm still going to come back to Paris High, visit every now and then. So, of course, so thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Agundes. Yes, I'm going to introduce um, Pinacate. They love the way I say that, I guess. <laughs> Pinacate Middle School student rep, uh, Hannah Siever. Final meeting. <laughs> um, good evening, President Holstrom, members of the board, Dr. Greenbring, and members of the cabinet. Thanks for having us here tonight so we can report on all of the wonderful things happening at Pinacati. First of all, we'd like to say thanks to Mr. Hilton for allowing our eighth graders go to Paris High School back in March. They let us go over and sign up for clubs and watch all the performers. Our boys' basketball team beat Margarita Middle School from Temecula in March and later in April, too. The Temecula parents were very impressed with our new gymnasium. 
They liked it. <laughs> well, thanks again for building it. Now Leah. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Leah Aisby's eighth grade rep. Thanks for having us here. On April 9th, over 120 seventh grade AVID Excel students went on a field trip to Cal State Fullerton. Thanks to our AVID teachers, it was a fantastic trip. The, teacher did, the teachers did an amazing job organizing their trip. On Wednesday, April 23rd, over 100 parents, students, and staff came to watch approximately 40 students be inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. Thanks to all who helped, Ms. Kyle, Ms. Carol, Ms. Marby, Mr. Daniel Morgan, Ms. McKenzie, and Ms. Knoll. Especially thank, a special thanks goes to Ms. Brown, who coordinated the event. Now, Melissa. Good evening. Good evening, I am Melissa, ASB 7th grade rep. Thanks for having us all here tonight. On April 29th, an estimate of 500 plus parents and students showed up for the new 7th grade orientation. ASB and staff helped make this possible, so we would like to say thanks to them. On Thursday, May 8th, we had our open house. We served food and presented a slideshow at the beginning. Then parents went and visited all the students' classes. A special thanks to President Holstrom, Dr. Greenberg, and Mr. Swartz for visiting us on the night. Now back to Hannah. Um, like she said, she is our seventh grade rep this year, and next year she will be our ASB VP. Oh. We want to say congrats to Coach Anderson and Chantel Robb, our Think Together coordinator for the success of our girls and boys soccer teams in our tournament in Reno Valley. The girls soccer team came in overall in second place. The boys came in third place overall. They did a great job with their victories. We finally finished our SBAC and CST testing last week. <laughs> All the students were excited to be able to use their Chromebooks rather than bubbling in answers. They worked really hard. The students are finishing strong in everything they do throughout the end of the year. We would like to congratulate our staff for receiving the model of excellence for positive behavior intervention and support. They really are amazing workers. Thanks to them, Pinacati is a great place to be now. Also, Pinacati is holding a Spring Arts Night Festival tomorrow, or tomorrow night at 6. So for, the, for those who would like to come and see what's going on, you are more than welcome to come and visit. <coughs> we are also looking forward to our end-of-the-year activities like 8th grade awards, 8th grade promotion, 8th grade knots trip, and also 7th grade Puma Day on the last day of school. That concludes our final speech of the year. If there are no questions, then thanks for your time, and hopefully we'll see you all again next year. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Nielsen. Thank you. From uh, Paris Lake High School student representatives Natalie Laguna, Anthony Santiago, Cassandra Cruz, and Linda Sandoval. Lisa Sandoval, I'm sorry. All right, so how's everyone doing tonight? Good. Good. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> thank you for a wonderful 2013-2014 school year. The senior class from Paris Lake High School, thanks you for all of your support, and we really appreciate it to talk. Um, we, uh, we didn't get to tell you guys who won our promposo, and it was Nathan Gonzalez and Vanessa Flores, and they're the two on the right. And we had... We just wanted to um, take this time to thank Mr. Rodriguez for letting us go as their guest to prom, and we had a really fun time. Um, this is from last year's, I mean, last semester's <laughs> um, Halloween maze, and we just wanted to re-show you guys how far we've overcome all throughout this this entire experience in ASB, and it's been really great. So for, so for our activities day, a lot of people participate in our new edition of our pie throwing contest. Uh, we feel like our school gets more united every time we join in for Friday activities. We hope to have a very fun Friday this May 23rd for our softball game versus teacher senior. 
We all know who's going to win here. Class 2K14. <laughs> and this is just a little preview of what goes on. Okay, um, this is some pictures of, like, the students in classes. Oh. And we, ha we just recently finished the Cassie. Um, um, we're really happy with all our seniors graduating this year. And we're all just trying to pass, you know, get through it. We're working our behinds off. <laughs> 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 and it's it's been really a good experience for us to know that our teachers are there for us and they're supporting us on everything we do. So just a reminder that on the 30th of May we're going to have our awards night and this year we didn't have we're not going to have it at Paris Lake High School. We wanted to go out of tradition. So we are um happy that um, Pinnacotti let us use their facility to go and just try something different, see how it goes. Um, it is going to be formal, so we're expecting that everyone to go nice, you know, look like Beyonce, Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> just no Miley Cyrus. Just We don't need that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're just like, um, we've been working on the awards, and a lot of people did accomplish a lot, and... That's a uh, that's something good about this school that we do work hard and everything. Go. Oh, I'll let you go. We just wanted to show you that this is our ASB family, and um, we want to tell you guys our experience in yeah, <laughs> Paris, <we'll start> <laughs> in Paris Lake, and um, I think talking for behalf of the seniors that are graduating, we really do feel like. Like, this school did help us, because, um, don't cry. Um, you know, kinda, like, this being my first year at Paris, uh, Paris Lake, because I was a, a Paris High student, I thought that, like, people did give up on me at first, but this school did actually show us that, you know, they gave us a second chance that we're, that we are somebody, and we made it, like, all seniors, you know? So, it's like, uh, sorry, it's like, um, it's a big accomplishment that, to know that people believe in us, and, you know, some kids don't realize that, but, we do, and you know, a lot of a lot of kids did mature, and like, they got through it, and like, we made it. We're, we're, yeah, we're gonna. We're old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, now, from the academy, we have student representatives Thomas. Tomas Andretti, uh, Giovanni Arana, and Filberto Quinero. Good evening, Dr. Greenberg, candidate, um, president, host room, and board members. My name is Giovanni, and there have been many great activities at the academy since we last met. About half of our students went to San Bernardino Museum and learned uh, local history and experience the animal exhibits, including the reptile house. Some, some of the staff were more enth enthusiastic than others about actually touching the reptiles. We loved it. <laughs> the first week back from spring break, we had a barbecue to encourage, encourage everyone to give it their best shot with the last phase of SBAC testing. Uh, students also participated in handball and basket ba basketball tournaments. We had a great time, and uh, we hope our score showed it. Speaking of testing, 20 10th graders took all part took all or part of Cassie uh, Cassie in March. Of the 12 students, we both we attempted both parts. Eight passed both uh, sections the first time. Also, five students passed one or uh, one part of the test 
In other words, almost two thirds of the students who tested past or one or more sections of the, this very difficult and important test. Academy students had the opportunity to attend the second annual Yao Summit at Paris High School on Saturday, April 26, sponsored by Paris High School, Fri Paris High's Friday Night Life Club. It was very informative and encouraged us to live healthy lives and be drug free. On May 10th, the Academy held a voluntary Saturday school session for students to both clear in absence and earn community service hours. Students did a wonderful job of beautifying the campus and then had the opportunity to complete missing and makeup assignments to help raise their grades. I'm Tomas, and last week we had a unified forum with 20 of our students participating. Irene Lewis and Aaron Fletcher felicitated the three and a half hour experience. We stre strengthened relationship, discussed issues at the academy such as bullying and drugs, and shared ideas of for creating a more positive environment. As we wind uh, wind things up at the academy for the year, most of the students are looking forward to going back to their home school. Most of us have learned our lessons and will make better choices throughout our lives. We will look back on our academy days with mixed emotions. There have been some great lessons learned in and out the classroom, but we will be happy to stay on track and graduate with our classes. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? Thank you very much. <laughs> Trustee Cooley. Good evening, P President Holstrom, members of the board, Dr. Greenberg, and members of the cabinet. We are the representatives from CMI, Cadet Captain Lopez and Cadet Corporal Cortez. On April 26th, CMI competed in the Golden Bear West Coast <coughs> National Drill Competition at North High School in the city of Torrance. Our very own Cadet Sergeant First Class, Moran Hossein, won second place out of 60 participants in the Iv individual armed drill competition. Uh, also on April 26th, uh, cadets and families attending were attended at CMI Day at the Lake Elsinore Storm baseball game where our varsity baseball team was recognized for the game and our assistant principal, Ms. Tay, threw out the ceremonial first pitch. On April 28th, tickets for the 2014 prom began to sell and will be selling until May 23rd for $75. This year's theme is Casino Royale and will be held on May 31st at the Pachanga Journey Club in Temecula. And also on April 28th, uh, the New Mexico Military Institute had a presentation for the 2014 senior class about their college program and the opportunities for our cadets to gain admission and scholarships. On May 1st, our track and field team was awarded 35 individual medals this season, along with two MVP patches for sprint and distance. And overall, our track and field team was named Warrior League Track and Field 2014 champions for both boys and girls. <laughs> and on May 3rd, the cheer and dance team took 51 girls representing CMI on four different teams to the Sharp International State Championship School Divisions at Knott's Berry Farm. They took home six trophies, which included a first place in varsity dance, varsity cheer, and middle school dance, and most importantly, CMI's combined dance team were named state champions. On May 6th, CMI cadets who, are, who took AP courses began and completed their AP testing in chemistry, calculus, biology, and in U.S. and European history. Um, our spring sports ended on a high note with both our baseball and softball teams qualifying for CIF playoffs, which they will be playing this Thursday and Friday. And on a special note, uh, Emma Kuros, which is our starting pitcher for our softball team, threw out a perfect game against Public Safety Academy in a 12-0 victory. On May 27th, Cadet Major Eddie Salas will be honored at the scholarship dinner at Monteleon Meadows in Marietta for being selected as CMI's Student of the Year. 
And lastly, on June 5th, uh, grad night will be held at Six Flags for our 2014 senior class. We'll return on June 6th, bright in the morning at 7 a.m. for senior breakfast at IHOP in Paris. And that's actually it for our report, and I w I'd like to say that uh, thank you to the board. I'm actually part of the 2014 senior class, and I will be graduating this year, so this is my last board meeting. And uh, thank you for the certificate. And there was actually one uh, thing that I did not put on my list today that I actually found out this morning, and I think it's better if uh, Cadet, Lop uh, Cadet Major Lopez, or Cadet Captain Lopez, tell you in person. Uh, for the 2014-2015 school year, I will be taking control of the 9th Regiment for the California Military Institute. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, is there any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, and students, this would be a nice time if you need to, to exit and go do what you have to do. Yeah. Oh, they're good kids, yeah. Okay, uh, PSCA President Paul Clay. Good evening, uh, board members. And again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to address you. And uh, I, too, on behalf of the PSCA, would like to wish uh, congratulations to all of our students uh, for their successes and uh, all the district educators and support staff for their efforts in aiding the students this school year. I do want to point out, too, that I consider the support staff educators as well. Um, they uh, may not always be in the classroom. Uh, they are constantly there to support us and to support the students, and uh, I would like to thank the CSEA members personally. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I also... Uh, I'm glad Julie Shaw is still here. I um, didn't know she was going to be on it tonight, and I do want to say that, uh, speaking for myself, I know she's been very helpful when I have those uh, computer issues that I don't seem to understand, and she has never failed me in either figuring out where the computer went wrong or where I went wrong. Um, I also wanted to thank Mr. Mr. Uh, William Clo, who uh, apparently has already left. Um, Mr. Clo. Oh, he was up here. He moved back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> today there was an issue um, in regards to drug use on campus and um, I uh, was rushing to deal with this situation and Mr. Clow was right there and without even questioning me I said I need your help and he came right with me and we took care of the issue actually I more or less gave it to him to take care of and um, <clears throat> but he was right there and not a question about it uh, that said uh, I do realize that uh, I'm always the one who seems to bring the bad news here. So there are some issues, and I do wish to discuss that. Um, <clears throat> I do want to address the issue of drug use. And I, and I heard it said that uh, at Paris High School, um, we had a successful program in which we addressed the, the misperception, and it is a misperception, that everybody's doing drugs. We know that's not the case. We know that probably, I would venture, most kids are not doing drugs. But it still continues to be a problem, and that was exemplified today. Uh, at Heritage when we, we had this problem that Mr. Clow helped me with. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, a severe problem still in our district, and it um, hasn't seemingly diminished as far as I can tell. Uh, on to other things. Um, uh, since April of last year, 13 months ago, you've heard me speak about the issues with uh, Mr. Asbury um, and the administrators at, uh, maltreatment of Mr. Asbury, and yet it continues. After a trumped-up and biased investigation that was conducted by the administration, they found no cause for any disciplinary action against him, and yet he has still been denied the opportunity to teach a subject he knows and he loves so well, music. He has been relegated to on-campus detention, certainly an unworthy demotion of a person who has shown far more dedication and commitment to the cause of education than some others. 
I'm here to say one more time that the investigation was a farce and a fraud and that this man was disparaged for false and prejudicial reasons. It is a pity that, and a shame that this continues. I think the board needs to put an end to this and uh, hold those responsible to account. It's been a waste of time, a waste of money, and it has harmed our students. They've been denied the education that was promised to them, and they are here now to demand an explanation. If this has been about the students, then why hasn't the administration actually listened to them? They are here to tell their story, and I'm going to let them continue, and I have more of my speech, but I'm, I'm just not going to continue right now. But um, this has been an um, unwarranted attack on Mr. Asbury, and uh, uh, it just continues one, one month after the other, and it really is time that it ends. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, CSE President Robert Colvin. Good afternoon, President Holstrom, members of the board, Dr. Greenberg, members of the cabinet. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come up here and address you this afternoon. And I'm glad I made it, actually. We just got back driving from Utah for the second time this week. So my wife's 92-year-old father was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. And it's amazing that someone can go 92 years and then have to have that happen to them. So we've been running back and forth taking care of that, and I appreciate your patience with me taking off work and my wife and so forth. So with that being said, uh, we made it through another school year. This is the last board meeting of the school year. <laughs> and right here at the end, as you know, we've been in negotiations with our successor contract for 12 months. And we came together collaboratively right there at the end, and we, we just knocked it out, and we, we came to a tentative agreement. And with the uh, help of the cabinet members and so forth, uh, we were able to uh, present it to our, our membership of the classified union, and we got a ratification on it. So we have a, a new contract, and we appreciate all your help on that. Uh, as you may be aware, one of our biggest issues this last year in negotiating the contract has been insurance. And uh, we came to agreement in negotiations that we should form an insurance committee and look into ways of uh, working around the insurance issues. And so we'd like to see if we could kind of get a jump start on that as soon as possible. And hopefully that won't be a big tie-up for us in this coming year <laughs> on our, on our uh, negotiations. So uh, with that all being said, um, if maybe this summer we could actually get a checkers review of the insurance to give us a jump start and see what uh, we might be able to look at and go from there. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you very kindly. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Okay, invitation to abor address the Board of Trustees. Okay, a uh, person wishing to be heard by the Board shall be recognized by the President and shall proceed to to comment as briefly as possible and subject permits. Individual speakers shall be limited, allowed three minutes to address the board on each agenda or not agenda item. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. With board content, consent, the president may increase the de or decrease the time allowed for the public presentation depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The president may take poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask the additional persons to speak only if they have something new to add. Okay, first, um, Pinnacotti report cards and, and counselors. Vicki Mueller. Good evening, President Holstrom, Cabinet and Board. Um, I come to you tonight for a couple reasons. I've had a lot of teachers from Pinnacotti come to me. Um, at the middle school level, Having the students take the report cards home, it doesn't work. We really need them mailed home. Um, that's the only time that we really have a true communication sometimes with some of the parents. And with them going home in the pockets, they don't make it. And I, I will put notes in there, please contact school immediately. Your child is in danger of failing. You know, every phone number I have is bad. So there's no way to call them. So if we could please, if we can find some way to find the money to mail the middle school report cards home, we would appreciate it. That's one. The second issue is counselors. Pinnacotti has two counselors. We had three several years ago, and we're down to two. Each of our counselors has a caseload of approximately 550 students. At the high school level, it's a little over 400. 
And middle school kids are not like high school kids, okay? What we would like to see is we would like to see an addition of a counselor and forego putting another VP in and having that third counselor concentrate on the 125 students that are our frequent flyers that also need uh, additional counseling, that need group sessions for a variety of things, anger management and things like that. I realize that there's a pot of money that it all has to come from, but it's something that we feel really passionate about and it's not fair that our teachers and our counselors, our counselors especially get treated differently at Pinacati and have a bigger caseload with some very difficult students. So I appreciate your consideration in this matter and again, please mail the report cards home for Pinacati. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Okay, his title is Why Choices Made About What's Going in Our Schools. Maria Felix. Good evening. Hello. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Maria Felix. Um, I want to start by saying I'm very upset on what is going on with the band issues and especially that Mr. Asbury wasn't put back in as a band director. Even after nothing was found of what he was accused for or accusations that was done to him. Instead, you have him babysitting, you know, on detention kit with the kids that are on detention. So why continue this game? Are we all adult, adults here? What are you trying to prove? Why put a teacher as a band director when rumor has it he is retiring in a year or two? And this I hear from other people that I've spoken to, and I know other kids from Paloma High School. I would also like to say to the trustees, you know, do you really know what's going on in our school, in our districts? Because I know from things get to them, and I'm sure some of it gets hushed hush up to you guys. I really wish you guys knew some of the issues going on in the schools. But this man deserves to get his job back. All of you guys have your PhDs, your masters, your BA degrees whatsoever. How would you feel if someone accused you of something and booted you off of your positions? You wouldn't like it, right? You guys would try to fight for your positions back. That's what we as parents are doing with Mr. Asbury because we believe in him. And if no one else is going to be there, not if you guys not there, we have to be there. We care for him. It's not right what's going on. There's a big separation now with band. There's a lot of kids in band that loved band that are no longer in band, are not getting along with each other. It's just very divided. There's one of our girls, Carla Ortiz, she loved band. She is no longer in zero period because of the separation. Thank God she's an AP student. She has all these scholarships going on. She's very, you know, that's one thing that she's put behind her because her education's first. But she would be here right now speaking for this man and a lot of other kids. But they can't because of the backstabbing that's still going on and because People go and talk, and they go tell the office or whatever is going on, and then things just just start to happen. So please find it in your heart. If he was qualified once, he's still qualified now, and especially if everything's been cleared. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, parent participation at Parish. Heritage High School, uh, looks like Martha Morgan. Matthew, Morgan. Matthew, I'm sorry. Uh, good, good evening, um, board members and president. As parent and observer of the school of the parent participation for the last year, parent participation is a low to non-existent Heritage High School. This is a school that has more than 70% ethnic and is underserved by the lack of Hispanic administration in the office. Um, 
as well as African Americans not in the ministry or counseling, just likely in the district office. By the way, we support our teachers 100% because we know that we're simply trying to do their job. Having sat on the parent planning committee all year in school site since February, we have observed poor planning with the school site council. It took Marcy Savage to intervene to get it started. The first meeting was January 2014. The uh, original meeting for uh, school site council was supposed to be in August. They were supposed to convene in August. We were, parents asked about it for over three months with no reply. This is a deliberate not to have parents on there. The year before, 2012, 2013, there were seven teachers, no parents on that committee. If it wasn't for the diversity of the parents on the school site council, there would be no diversity. Uh, not even one Hispanic teacher is on the school site council. It took the entire year to get this ministry listened to us for a parent liaison at the site. We tried to meet with the administration on several occasions with no participation from Mrs. Zero or her assistant principals. When Mr. Close showed up at the district meeting and made a couple of suggestions. We suggested several different events, but that never occurred. We asked Ms. Zero to participate, but she never participated other than the site council. There's been a steady decline in African Americans at Heritage during a racial and sensitive investigation against blacks and loose use word of the N-word on the campus in 2009-10. There was a release of Ms. McQueen, biology teacher, black student club advisor, football announcer released, cheerleader coach Demetrius released, and a personal attack on me and my wife from the school superintendent. He told me I was not welcome to come to meetings to express my disappointment of Mrs. Zero. And then finally, Mr. Asbury, award-winning band director, one of the most awards at the school that the school has ever received from any competitive group. This could be a coincidence that all these people are African Americans, or is it? Um, by the way, all the positions that I just mentioned were all filled by white applicants. There's no longer any black students' unions on the campus. You have, you have to understand that parent participation is, is, is an, an engaging event in which our principal will not engage. Uh, by the way, we are parents of freshmen and sophomore students. No upper class are involved. The parents that are on, the, on that committee are two African Americans, two Hispanics, and one Native American. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but it seems like it has. We ask you to respect parents. Parents remove all obstacles that prevent your children from success and creativity. Plus, not only that, there is continuous... Um, uh, amount of insincerity by this administration. We need parent participation. We cannot move on without it. And this administration at the school has to be changed immediately. If not, we're going to continue to have a problem with the parent participation at Heritage High School. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, Mary Rose Kitten. Khan. I'm sorry. Khan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, um, board, um, president, superintendent, assistant superintendents, vice president, um, clerk, members, uh, Mr. and Mrs., um, parents, teachers, um, all the staff, all the people here. Um, good evening. Okay. Um, in uh, Heritage High School, we are trying to build a legacy, and its legacy is L for leadership, E for excellence, G for... Anybody? Generosity. Generosity, A for academic, uh, C for character, and E for uh, Y for opportunity. Okay. Um, we're trying to build that. So um, why is Mr. Asbury not our band director for this year? There is a selected Mr. Arnold, and I don't understand that, and I'd like to know the facts. So I would like to get a report or a copy that... Um, related to Mr. Asbury, and I think we also the parents and uh, um, supported um, people uh, need to have copies of uh, one copy of um, the result that um, the reason why Mr. Asbury was taken out uh, two semesters ago and for um, while he's doing his job as a band director. So please, um, I'd like to have a copy of the result of that. Um, the decision that made, that's one. And two is um, why Mr. Adams become the band director, that the next thing after that. So please, um, I'd, I'd like to have a copy of that, of the result or investigation. And also the parents deserve that and other people involved to have a copy. And please give us copies. And the third, why and how the uh, process of selecting a band director uh, made, is it with the parents? Is it made with two people? Is it made with just a principal? Uh, 
please um, give us a copy of that too and um, give us a reason on that report why Mr. Arnold, uh, which is a Paloma Valley High School band director uh, is, and I think he's finishing his band director there, and moving to um, Heritage High School, when Mr. Asbury is there already and um, proven to be a great band director and also promoting the legacy that we're trying to build in Heritage High School. He's a part of the legacy that we're trying to build. And everybody's caring here. And I, a wise man told me, give everybody benefit of a doubt. So prove to me that everybody here are really caring people and we need each other. Not just some people, we all need each other. So please help us, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, Mr. Ashbury, uh, Zahib Khan. Good evening, good evening everybody. Um, hello, my name is Zohab Khan. I'm currently a, a junior attending Heritage High School. Uh, I am uh, a, band, a band member and also uh, along uh, the other activities I'm a part of, I'm also part of National Honor Society. I'm here along with other students and family members um, to discuss um, about one of our previous band directors, Mr. Dwight Asbury. It has been um, a little more than a year ago since he has been removed as our band director. Since then, we've been doing a lot of adjusting with our um, new band director, Mr. Adams, over the past year. And we heard recently that for the next upcoming 2014-2015 school year that we will be receiving a new band director, um, Mr. Arnold, f that used to be the band director from Paloma. While we understand all the changes and circumstances that ha may have arisen, we hope that you can consider Mr. Asbury as, um, to come back as our band director for the upcoming school year. Um, he has done so much since Heritage High School opened in 2007 and has helped us win so many awards um, like that are still showcased to this day inside the band room. Um, he's been there um, for all the students that he's taken under his wing, and he's been an important part in our lives and in my life as well. Um, there are so many other great reasons that I uh, can explain and other um, people here in support of him can explain, but we hope that um, you can... Um, un consider and understand um, bringing back Mr. Asbury as your band director for next year. And that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We've gone through about 16 minutes. So I'll give two more. I've got three here. So um, I have um, Moisin Khan, Kelly Mallard, Guillermo Felix. Uh, I'll take two of the three. Does anybody like to not come up? Okay, I'll just I'll just grab them and we'll start here. Um, Moisin Khan, Mr. Ashbury. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, um, uh, faculty, uh, district, and good evening, everyone who who has come in to um, to this meeting. Um, I'm a, uh, my name is Mosin Khan, and I'm a four-year band member and National Honor Society student. And I'm here in support for Mr. Asbury. I'm, I'm finishing my junior year at Heritage High School, and I want to talk about the band under the direction of Mr. Asbury. He has, took, he has taken us everywhere, whether from L.A. to San Diego, and has taken all his time, whether he's being paid or not, and he's done everything for us. Um, uh, he left us last April, I believe, or March, and, I'm fin and um, he's helped all the families through fundraising in order to support the band program. Uh, he has taught the Pasadena... Pasadena Rose Parade, while also teaching at the UC USC band, and he's been teaching for over 30 years. All he's done for us was support us and care for us, and then all of a sudden he's been taken out of his role, and since they haven't found anything wrong with him, why doesn't he got come back as their band director? Um, he, he's, he's more than qualified to be 
and he's still here with us and then you and then we get someone else he also has numerous awards from across socal southern california and this is one of them this is our first place award at drums across california and ever since we have never gotten a first place award since he has left he taught more and i just want to say he's he's been there for us through thick and thin and we want to show our support for him and we hope you guys can see how much he's done and how qualified he is and we want to know why he hasn't been given his role that he truly deserves please give it, give this to us because if there's nothing to hide we we deserve the truth on why he's not giving it and what are the qualifications um that he got his that he wasn't given his Ben Rucker role after he has reapplied we will be we will be constantly looking for that and we'll we will we'll, we won't stop till we get the results we we want to know why this has happened and we want to see the future and we all want positive and we all are good people and we all deserve the truth so with that and all of these people who will support this plight we ask you kindly and politely to please give us the answer on why this is occurring thank you yeah. thank you very much okay this will be the final one uh kelly mallard I want to thank Mr. Felix, my fellow band parent, for allowing me to be the one to speak. Um, Dr. Greenberg, superintendents, members of the board, thank you for having me here tonight. I actually am coming to you from Loma Linda. My dad is uh, terminally ill, and um, but it was still important for me to be here tonight at your last board meeting of the school year uh, to speak out on behalf of the students of the Mighty Patriot Regiment, Mr. Asbury, and also, um, based on most recent developments, I want to talk to you on behalf of the students in the Wildcat Brigade at Paloma Valley High School. Um, Thirteen months ago, as has been stated, uh, Mr. Asbury was removed from his position without explanation to the parents and the students, and I am also understanding now that many of the students in uh, Paloma Valley's Wildcat Brigade felt blindsided by the removal of Mr. Pat Arnold as their music director, and my understanding is he has now been installed um, at Heritage High School as the band director there. Uh, your decisions as district administrators affect thousands of students district-wide, but how often do you actually personally witness the impact on those students of the decisions that you make? Um, you allowed a principal at Heritage High School to humiliate and incriminate Mr. Asbury. He was placed on administrative leave on the basis of unfounded allegations. You were eventually forced to allow this veteran director to, to return to work, but you would only allow him to supervise the students in on-campus detention. Under your watch, a math teacher was installed as band director. Under his watch, the program has just completely declined over the last year. After substantiated complaints against the math teacher who you installed as a band director and accusations between him and his color guard instructor against each other, you finally removed him from the band director position. But instead of reinstating the founding director of this Mighty Patriot Regiment, um, who I understand is now the latest union representative at Heritage High School, uh, you made the founding director reapply for the job that you never should have removed him from to begin with. And as I stated, you ended up giving that job to the director from Paloma Valley High School, which l lends me to ask you what happens to the students in that program who did not have see this coming whatsoever. Um, and I also, it, it's a rumor. I don't know that it's true or not, but my understanding is that the principal who moved to remove Dwight Asbury as band director is the one who interviewed him when he was forced to reapply for the job. The Mighty Patriot Regiment, the Wildcat Brigade, they enjoyed a friendly crosstown rivalry, but they were families. They were family units, and under your watch, those families were deliberately, systematically dismantled without any regard or any consultation for the families who were affected by it. Um, when you look back in your careers, and I'm speaking specifically to the assistant superintendents and you, Dr. Greenberg, you will have to accept that somewhere along the line where this situation is concerned, you forgot the solemn responsibility that you held to serve in the best interests of our students without regard for personal agendas. The decline of music education in this district happened on your watch, and it was completely unnecessary. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, consent calendar. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any comments or questions on this? Okay, please. Oh. Okay, as a, this is as amended. We've had some changes in it since it originally went on. Okay, um, please vote. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, introduction of promoted and or new employees. Yes, it gives me great pleasure, Mr. Holstrom, to introduce, uh, first of all, Jesse Flores, who at the last board meeting wasn't able to be here because of spring break. We just recognized his wonderful wife. Jesse Flores is the new assistant principal at Pinacotti Middle School. Mr. Flores, come up to the microphone. Yeah, yeah, come on up, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, President Holstrom, members of the board, and Dr. Greenberg and members of the cabinet. It's great to be here again in front of you. Um, and that's my distinct ple pleasure and privilege as principal at Pinacotti to introduce Mr. Flores as our new assistant principal. Mr. Flores was with us at Pinacotti about six years ago. He um, started in the district at Pinacotti, teaching math to mostly uh, students in special education or other high at risk students. Did, established a well deserved reputation of someone who really could connect with those students and teach them well. He uh, later on continued to develop that reputation by going on to Paris High School, where he also coached wrestling. And then he moved on to Heritage High School, continued to coach wrestling, and um, also became an admin designee. Um, in January of 2014, he has since returned to Pinacotti. He came back as our PBIS TOSA, Positive Behavior Intervention Support TOSA, replacing Ms. Jones. I kind of introduced him in February, and he presented when we had a presentation in February, if you remember. He has shown a great ability. He's a very quick learner, really knows ed code well, but also he knows how to um, develop systems, put systems in place and interventions to help our PBIS program. Three things that he's done already is he's established our wrestling club. He has also helped with voluntary after-school tutoring, which is a big hit for our eighth graders right now. They are coming, and some of them are staying for up to three hours working with tutors to get ready for promotion. And also, he's developed one of our most important interventions, working with our highest at-risk students called Brothers Keepers. He is already, already he's gained the trust of our staff. He is showing so much great potential, not just as a leader, but as an outstanding school administrator. We are very pleased to have Jesse with us, and he's just going to do a great job at Pinnacotti. And let me turn the time over to him. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to thank all of you for believing in me and for giving me the opportunity to make a greater impact in the lives of these students. Um, I'd also like to thank all the administrators in the room who've created opportunities for me to grow as a professional throughout the years um, and to advance in my career and have motivated me to, uh, to be a successful person here. I've always felt supported in this district and I will continue to move up throughout my career. Um, as Mr. Morgan mentioned, we've already done a lot of positive interventions with these students and I 
plan to continue working with all stakeholders on our campus to continue moving Pinacati in a positive direction. So thank you. I'd like to I'd like to ask Mr. Art Fritz, our incredible director of maintenance and operations, to come up to introduce our newest member of the leadership team, our uh, plant supervisor at Heritage High School, Mr. Mike Slippich. And we're all kind of a little surprised, Mike. None of us have seen you in a tie. I mean, Only just, a second this time. is like, is you, sure it's you? I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, board, uh, cabinet, public. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Michael Slippich, a former senior skilled maintenance worker who's been promoted to the plant supervisor of Heritage High School. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. Appreciate that. First, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my wife, Leslie, my son, Aaron, and my daughter, Eleni, who can't be here tonight. The inspiration behind everything I've got. So with that, I uh, thank you for everybody. I totally appreciate this opportunity, and I look forward to uh, helping Heritage High School and the district. Thank you once again for this opportunity. Look forward to it. <laughs> Dr. Greenberg, don't get used to the class. I'm still in shock. We want to get a picture of our website. Dr. Greenberg, can I, can I say just a little something about Mr. Slippage? Um, many of you know, oh, we have to reenact your picture because I was listening to you and forgot to take your picture. But that wasn't what I wanted to say. Just a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> You come back to the podium while I talk about you, and then I'll ask Steve to take your picture. But I wanted everyone to know that um, when we were going through the recession, we had to make a lot of um, cuts in the district and do a lot of things. Um, you know, you always hear, you know, work, work smarter, not harder. And uh, with the background that Mike came to us with uh, doing project management and in, con in construction, he was a vital member of the team under Art and Hector when we started doing a lot of projects in-house. Marcy, I'm sure you know this, but your facility was done by Mike and his co-workers um, and many other facilities. He, oh, he's not done yet. Oh, I guess you have something else to do. <laughs> that might be passed on to somebody else at this point. <laughs> but I just wanted to take an opportunity just to brag about you a little bit because you, your Candace. skills will be used at Heritage in that same capacity. Oh, thank you, Candice, and I look forward to the opportunity. Okay, funding options for advanced placement testing. Good evening, board president, board members, Dr. Greenberg and cabinet and everyone behind me, um, and to those who are leaving as well. Um, last month at the board meeting, we had a, uh, a person who came up and shared some information about um, AP programs and our students not being able to participate due to funding. So what I did was I kind of listed and what they're all looking at is an outline, just brief outline of the different tests um, that are offered to our to our students, and then I showed that the what the fees are, and which one of those tests have fee uh, waiver availability, and then just a little outline, just simple simple information on what each one of those tests is. And I believe um, this individual spoke in particular on the AP testing. So I wanted to give you this outline so you had kind of an idea of what the expense is. And as you look at it, it is expensive. Um, AP testing, $89, um, even though the College Board provides $26 to $28 um, reduction, it still is an expense. So if you have a student who's even taking, let's say, the PSAT or the SAT or whatever, by the time they're a senior, they've accumulated some testing costs. On the back side, I just want to update each and every one of you on the efforts that are, that have been in existence for many, many years and continue to be, because we really need to give a tremendous thanks to our school counselors, um, even with their high 
number of responsibilities. They, um, they identify, they counsel, and they promote testing for all eligible students. Can we do a better job in identifying early on those students who are eligible and make sure that we touch base in a one-to-one -one relationship, you know, in communication on are there any hindrances that keep you from taking this test? Yes, we can do a better job with that. And um, in working with Mr. Newman, Director of Pupil Services, he has a lot of ideas on how we can promote that as well. The students do confer with their counselors, and let me tell you, they do confer with their teachers. And many of them do share, gosh, you know, I, my family just can't afford this or whatever. The fee waiver availability is put into place. Um, I know Charles Tippy pays close attention to fee waiver availability and making sure that we have adequate numbers and that we meet that each year. Staff also, um, I think this came out because I think Ms. Cooley, you even said, okay, I'd like to donate. Let me tell you, every single site has staff members. When they learn about a student who can't afford something, it is quietly and confidentially offered. Um, and we can continue to do that, and we can continue to look at ways to help students to make sure that every student who's eligible takes those tests so they can go onward with their education. I outlined a few plans um, that we have in place to expand those opportunities. Do we do, we can do more frequent monitoring of the eligible students and meeting with them. Um, community outreach is another part that we're looking at so that parents are really aware and become more familiar with testing opportunities as it relates to their children and what is the purpose of the tests and how affordability and opportunity um, that avails for funding. The other, the last sheet I just gave to you because I thought it was really interesting. I was really curious as to how AP testing has grown and this is and Mr. Holstrom, I apologize because that the one that doesn't show a color, <laughs> the second band, is really, it's, it's for um, past AP test in 2013. The font is extremely small. I couldn't enlarge it without distortion. But if you look at California, we've had a significant increase in the past 10 years on the percentage of students in our, in our schools taking AP placement. Um, and virtually it's doubled in many, many places. So we're very proud and we'll continue to pursue that. And I hope, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know any ideas um, so we can catch every student and afford opportunity. Carolyn, you have a question I can tell. <laughs> Too excited, but I'm, I'm so angry about this. I don't understand why. Children who are taking um, AP courses, um, why are they not all given gate money to take these tests? Why do we not fund all the students who are eligible to take yes. all the AP class classes, courses? Well, there's over 34 courses, as you know. Um, I think, number one, it's affordability. We've never really, in my tenure here, we've never really talked about affording AP, you know, funding um, for all students who are eligible to take AP. It'd be a pretty exorbitant amount, I'm going to say. Plus, I'm going to speak as a parent. I had three students, I, I mean three children, and I can remember, um, yeah, you go into debt <laughs> when they're taking those AP courses. But the one thing I noticed was those students who are taking the AP courses, and this is not a good excuse, but I just have to share, those students who are taking AP courses really work towards making sure that they get that funding. Um, we can consider looking at opportunities to have a pool of money or you know, some kind of funding available for those students who are really at risk. Isn't that how Gates, uh, Gate was originally um, weren't they providing money for those classes? The gate, the or gate, not the classes, the tests. The gate monies. Yes. Um, Grant, do you remember if gate monies were attributed directly, not to AP, not and AP. not for testing? Okay. Well, I, I, I would like to make some kind of 
recommendation that we, um, I don't care if we advance money or, or get more money in this area, but it just seems that kids who are taking, and I'm like you, I spent a fortune on every AP test that my daughter took. That's not the reason I'm doing this. I just think that there's a kid that's done all this work and regardless of the parents' income, I think they should be rewarded. They should no. get that opportunity. The good thing is, is there's a fee waiver available on the AP. So, and for many of our students here, that helps. So actually, if we maybe begin to look at what kinds of, my big concern is, are we missing students? Are they, you know, are we not catching those students and providing the opportunity due to money? Yeah, I agree but, with that, yeah. but at the same I think, time. I think we need to look at, let's, let me do a little more research on how many students have taken AP testing, let's just say even from this year, and what that cost was and or continues to be, and how much of the fee waiver was attributed to that, and just what kind of gap are we talking about? Okay. Okay. I'm not quite satisfied, but I, I understand what you're saying. Well, we I have just... students who are eligible. They meet the fee waiver, and they're eligible, so we still need to but utilize I, that. I don't yeah. like that eligibility part. I just feel like if they took the class, they should be able to take the test, and we should pay for it. I mean, why? I mean, we're working for kids. Um, why aren't the kids getting this opportunity? They should all get it. So let me look and see how many students don't get, I mean, if we can determine if there really is a gap and how we can close that gap a little bit better. Well. Or, I mean, taking it from if we funded, we, you know, if you're eligible for that fee waiver availability, I, I would, you know, you're not going to deny that opportunity. Yeah, but yeah. with that, let's see if we, how we can look at supporting and promoting the test for all eligible students. Well, yes, for all, all students. Well, all students who meet, who, who take AP. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you know. I, that's our goal, is to get them to that high, higher, higher end, more rigorous end, so. Yeah. Okay, so let me come we'll back. We'll bring back some. more information at the June board meeting, Mrs. Twyman. Yes, yes. Okay, will do. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, discipline and suspension reports for March and April for those who want to go into details. Okay, we're to action items and anybody object to maybe a 10 minute break? Okay, we'll take We'll uh, reconvene about 7.20 or so. We'll reconvene here. Um, this is 14.1 personnel approval tentative agreement between Parish Union High School District and the CSEA. Um, do I have a motion, please? Okay, David was closest, and Joan was closest for a second. Um, anybody have any questions or no questions? Okay, so why don't you go ahead and vote here. Okay. Next item, personnel district submits their initial proposal to negotiate with the Paris Secondary Educators Association for 2014-15. Uh, motion, please. Second. Uh, Ed and Joan. Okay. And please vote. Oh, it's a public hearing. Oh, gosh, not again. It says action now. Oh, it is. Okay. Well... All righty. Uh, is, this is the thing I'm supposed to follow? That's another public. Uh. 
Okay. All righty. Um, at 725, um, okay, anybody like to come up and comment about our proposal here? Nobody, yep. <laughs> Boy, that may be the last movie he'll ever make. <laughs> Other than that, is anybody else? I don't see anybody. So 726, we're finished with that. Okay. Um, do you, you can vote now, I think. Thank you for keeping me going correctly, I hope. Okay. Okay. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Okay. Paris Secondary Educators Association submits their initial proposal to negotiate with the high school district for 2014-15. And at 7.27, uh, would anybody like to make comments about their proposal? Oh, good. Even less movement out there. Okay. It's over at 7.28. And oh, I'm, I'm a motion, please. Oh, that was close. I'll give it to Joan now. Okay, please vote. Okay. Okay, next item, personnel approval of salary increase for trainee classified employee funded through the general fund. Motion, please. Ed and Joan. Okay, can you um, get a very brief uh, description of what this is? Um, this is a program, uh, this is our Exceed program. We have one employee currently in the district uh, that um, comes to us from Exceed. Um, that is Corey uh, Lutz, who works in our in the HR um, office. As, um, and uh, he's, his salary increase is just in line with all the other employees in the district. So, Okay. He's not represented by anybody. He's just from Exceed. No, he's not so represented just to keep by anybody. Him, even with everybody else. By me, yeah. Oh, I'm okay. his exclusive representative. <laughs> oh, boy, yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, please vote. Okay. Item 14.5. Uh, Curriculum 2013-14 Safe School Plans, annual updates. Motion, please. So Second. Oh, I think David won that one. Okay, and very brief report on this thing. Okay, um, each and every year with the help of Mr. Holstrom, we're making these safe school plans better, but I really want to thank the site administrators and their teams for um, taking this seriously, obviously, uh, we're concerned. Uh, events around the country, um, certainly we've, we've had our own issues. Um, and uh, we want to have plans that people understand, that they know what to do. And I think in the future, uh, I heard Candace Rains tell me that maybe we'll bring Judy Miller in a little bit more on the safe school plans as well. And um, we think that'll add a different layer of, of district support to that. So again, we appreciate uh, your input, Mr. Holstrom, in making these better, and they're living documents. So anytime well, we're gonna change these over the year, even though uh, hopefully they're adopted tonight, um, our principals are, uh, certainly have the ability to change them on the fly. Okay, I, I read through all of them, or at least I found a section that uh, interested me, and I uh, found a little, in some inconsistencies, but uh, from what I, when I first started on the board, this is a huge, a vast improvement over what we used to have. And uh, I, th I thank everybody that's worked so hard on these. And like you say, this is kind of a work in progress. And so 
if I read another part, I'll probably find some house complain about, but say la vie. Any other comments? Okay, why don't we vote on it then? Okay. Okay. Building and grounds. Public hearing regarding adoption of the alternate school fees as justified in the 2014 school facilities need analysis of resolution number 281314. Uh, resolution of the Board of Trustees, Parish Union High School District, approving the school facilities needs analysis, adopting alternative school facility fees in compliance with government codes, right there, adopting responses to public comments received and making related findings and determinations. Um, do I need to start that one first or get a motion? Oh, okay. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Okay. And Ed. Okay. Okay, the board now op opens the public hearing on the adoption of the Parish Union High School District's 2014 School Facilities Needs Analysis, Final 2014 SFNA, and Alternative School Facility Fees in Compliance with Government Code Sections 6599.5.5, 6599.5.6, and 6599.5.7, and Education Code Section 17620. Copel and Gruber Public Finance has prepared the final 2014 SFNA dated April 18th, 2014, which is now being considered for adoption in compliance with all applicable statutes and regulations. Have any written comments been received by the district as to the proposed final 2014 SFNA? And if so, have such comments been forwarded to and been considered by all board members present as included in the agenda materials for this meeting? No. Is there anyone present who wishes to comment on the proposed final 2014 SFNA or the SFNA resolution? If so, please state your name prior to making comments. Oh, oh they're, they're learning fast. Oh, I'm not supposed to say things like that. Does any board member or district staff wish to respond to these? Oh, there weren't any oral comments. Thank you. Oh, the board will now entertain the motion. We did that to adopt the oral responses, so we didn't have any. Oh, boy. If there are no more oral written comments, I declare the public hearing closed. The board will now entertain the motion to adopt it, which we did. Any discussion? Okay, nobody seemed. You, it was clock up there, seven thirty to seven. Lori's got it. She's she's got a watch. Thank you. We we need somebody that has that. I sure don't. Okay, uh, please vote. Okay, 14.7, Business Disclosure of Collective Bargaining Agreement AB 1200 for the period of July 1, 2013 and ending June 30th, 2016 for the Classified School Employees Association, Chapter Number 469. Do you have a motion, please? So moved. Second. My goodness. Any questions, comments? Nobody? Okay, please vote. Okay. Okay, 15 1 business revolving cash report. Exciting item. <laughs> Curriculum revised course, uh, science, environmental science. Curriculum, new pilot program, transition courses aligned with Mount San Jacinto College for Math and English support classes. Mm -hmm. 
Board Policies, Business and Non-Instructional Operations Series 3000. Board Policies, Instruction Series 6000. Closed session if necessary. It's not necessary, Mr. President. Very good. Okay. Um, I have a motion and discipline items. So moved. Second. Whoa. Ooh, that, was that was close, close. close so but I'll. Photo finish. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> let it go this way. I think we don't need to do things like that. Please vote. Do we have that high speed audio voting? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Socialist protesting. <laughs> We're getting giddy. We're getting giddy. Vote. Oh, I thought I did. Oh. Okay. Eighteen two discipline ratification agreement of expulsions motion please. So moved. Well, that was assertive there. Okay, vote please. Other items by the superintendent. None. Oh, very good. Other items by the board. Carolyn? Kind of, it was interesting. It was about engineering classes and it mentioned heritage and um, I think it was Paloma. Anyway, it was good. Okay, uh, Ed? Yeah, just, you know, a positive comment about our staff, you know, and all the good stuff that uh, our superintendent shared with us today, I mean, on and on, we'd still be here if, uh, if we let him, right? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff going on in the district, and, and that goes to, to show that we have a great staff and they're working hard and, you know, yeah, great kids, you know. I mean, but but uh, anyway, just wanted to, to uh, thank everybody for their hard work. Every department deserves some credit. Thank you. David? None. Joan? None. Okay, I had the privilege of going to the Solar Cup and received an invitation. They told me what time to be there, and so I got there and, you know, got a couple of T-shirts out of it, so it wasn't all lost, but the boats were way out in the lake, so you, you know, like that, and the only way you could tell the difference was some of them had red shirts and some had blue shirts and some had white shirts, and then I asked her teachers there, whose are ours? And they said, well, there's one out there with a white shirt behind the red shirt next to the blue shirt. So I guess that was the one I was watching most of the time. But it was fun and just to watch the kids and see some of the boats. And it was interesting that when a boat quits running, they go tow it in and they try to figure out what's wrong with it. And they tow it back out and let it start over, keep going. So, And then I finally got Joe to tell me, what, how do you determine the winner? And he says... You know, there's all these things to do for all seven or eight months, and then they finally get out in the lake and they compete, and they may win every race or something, but if they haven't done a lot of stuff beforehand well, it, they, they can finish mid-pack or way back. So it sounded like a complicated system, but, uh, you know, it looks like the kids were having fun, and that was good, and I'm sure they learned a great deal from it. So that's all for me. So, oh, CSMOS. to adjourn. Okay, and boat. Uh-oh, what the heck? Did yours come up? Uh-oh, page at board org says must select moves and seconds. Oh, I thought I did. Did I forget that? David did. 
He said, okay, I already did that, so it's not me. There. Oh, finally. Yeah, it probably was me. Uh, 741.